Another highlight of my pride was that I didn't have to go to a single straight wedding. <laughs> and I understand summer is your time to, you know, whisper secrets at each other in a garden or whatever, but sometimes for me, I'm here trying to do me, and then I have to get on a plane and fly to the Midwest and watch you all dance to moves like Jagger. It's an affront during Pride Month for me. I remember last year during Pride, I had to go and I was a groomsman. And so, you know, you have to, everybody's serving the same look. So I was emailed, you know, the instructions on wardrobe and it was a gray suit from Joss A. Bank. And I said, well, there's lines I cannot cross, you know? I suck dick for fun. I can't own anything from Joss A. Bank. Come now. So I was like, here's what's gonna happen. I, I'm not going to do that, but I'll wear something that to your untrained straight eye feels like I'm wearing the same thing, but I'll know what it really is, which is it won't be gray, it will be slate. Uh, it'll be very expensive, and a Dominican man on the Lower East Side will have tailored it to make my ass look incredible, you know? So that's how I handled that um, trial. That was my act of rebellion and resistance. The only bad thing that happened to me this Pride is I was very um, gently gay bashed uh, on, on a seven train. It was this ancient old European woman, because the seven train ends in the Ukraine. And <laughs> this woman is 180 years old, conservatively. And I'm only guessing at woman, because she was that age where like time has stripped gender away. Like you're so old that it's unclear what you, you've got like whiskers and tits and neither's a clue, you know? <laughs> She's the, you, you know what conservatives are like, no gender, that's the future liberals want. It's like, honestly, if we all lived long enough, that would be the future. Like at a certain age, there's no he nor she, there's not even they, it's just that, you know? So this that is like across from me. And at a certain point she clocked me and she started popping off and all this shit she loves in this old book she's obsessed with, you know? It was just like, oh, the Bible say man should not be with man, man, like that. But this cartoonishly high voice. So at a certain point I wanted to be like, you know, this is not the gig for you, honey. Like, listen to yourself. You've got the conviction, but you don't have the instrument. It's not fair, but I just think if you sound like a Muppet, categorically speaking, you have to like gay people. <laughs> The reason she knew that I was a gay is because my phone had a sticker on it that said Gays Against Guns, which is a lovely organization. And I am, I am both. And, and I bet some of you might be, you know, that's a political statement, but the odds are if we pulled the room, that's just statistics. But I'm fully so far, le yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. No, I'm gonna lose you here, because I'm a full slut for le all of it. I don't even, I'm not just anti-guns, I want more legislation on government intervention always. Like, I fully think you should have to have a license to operate an umbrella in Midtown. <laughs> I think you should appear in front of a board of PhDs and face an intense line of questioning where they're like, describe the outside of an umbrella. And if you're like, it's soft, they're like, yeah, but parts? Parts are sharp. And they're like, okay, good, next question. <laughs> Where are other people's eyes? And if you're like, where mine are, they'd be like, yeah, but you're like, and some above that. They'd be like, okay, good. <laughs> Final question, what is the role of the golf umbrella in the urban landscape? And you'd have to be like, a golf umbrella? You mean the six foot wide by six foot long umbrella intended for the vast open expanse of a golf course? Yeah, to use one inside of Penn Station is psychosis. And then you get an umbrella. Okay, I have to leave.